This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. More about them later. Hey there, everybody. Now, it's a well-established fact here at Casual Historian that I just absolutely love FDR. He is just the best. But why is he the best? Here are the five reasons why FDR is just the best. Sorry, I'm late. I had to stop by the Wax Museum again and give the finger to FDR. Hey everybody, this is Future Editing Grant, here to tell you about this video's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Back in February, my YouTube channel got hacked by a bunch of crypto scammers, and ever since then, I have been obsessed with my cybersecurity. And a VPN is an invaluable layer of protection guarding your real life from your digital life. A VPN is a virtual private network. This keeps you safe by encrypting your data, which, to outsiders, makes it look like you're located somewhere else in the world. Certain media is only available in certain countries, which is why people in places like China, Russia, and Iran use VPNs. However, you don't have to just be a political dissident to make use out of a VPN, because a VPN can turn your one streaming service into dozens. Surfshark also has a bunch of other useful features, such as a kill switch that disconnects you from the internet if your VPN loses connection, or it features multi-hop, which can place two VPN servers between you and your digital destination for even more security. Their servers are also 100% RAM based, meaning that they don't store your data, which means they aren't selling your personal information to advertisers and other nefarious actors. Their clean web feature also blocks over a million malicious websites and phishing schemes, which would have come in super handy in preventing that hacking I experienced. It also comes with a pop-up blocker for those cookie consent forms that the EU forced everyone to deal with, which is available on Google Chrome and Firefox. And Surfshark is giving viewers of this channel a special offer. By using the promo code CASUAL, you can get 83% off a two-year plan, and they'll give you an additional three months of service for free and you can try all of this out for free with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So go ahead and check out the link I have in the description or in the pinned comment below and use the promo code CASUAL to get 83% off a two-year plan plus three months for free. Thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. But now, back to the history. Reason number five, the New Deal. The New Deal was this huge collection of government expanding programs meant to save the economy. I mean, sure it didn't, but hey, who doesn't love the ability for the government to just grow and have the automatic excuse to say, hey, you know what? Let's just throw another big program at it. That'll fix it. I mean, that's just amazing. I mean, sure, most of the people who are the administration later admitted that, yeah, this program didn't work, but I mean, come on. It's the idea and the precedent that's important, not the actual impact of the policy itself. Come on, people. Can't you think beyond the dollars and cents? Number four, that time he decided to run for third and fourth terms. FDR's ideas were so important that he had to run for a third and fourth turn to preserve it. I know some people have tried to claim, oh, he was trying to fight the Nazis, but that has nothing to do with why he ran again. I have a whole video about that. You can check that out and see how awesome FDR was for doing so. But the short version is FDR chose to run for a third term because he wanted to preserve the Works Progress Administration, a program that basically let him give jobs to a bunch of people whenever he wanted and basically buy votes in time for elections. But most of the other candidates running in 1940 weren't interested in continuing it. So he decided to run again in order to preserve that one program. And do you want to know what happened to the WPA? The Roosevelt administration shut it down itself in 1943 because during World War II, there was no one for them to hire. And since you're already president for a third term, I mean, you might as well go for a fourth because I mean, you know, in for a penny, in for a pound. Number three, Japanese internment. Violating the constitutionally guaranteed civil rights of an entire class of American citizens is just peachy keen. I mean, come on. Can you really trust the Japanese? I mean, sure, there were some spies and they were exclusively in Hawaii, but I mean, you can't trust those Japanese in California. I mean, come on, people. Besides, and once again, think about the precedent. This sets up a million opportunities in the future to take care of inconvenient problems. Oh, and by the way, the Supreme Court case that allowed this to happen, Korematsu, it's technically still on the books. So you can thank FDR for all these amazing things. Number two, not doing enough in response to the Holocaust. Prior to entering the war, and even after entering the war itself, Roosevelt was a little hesitant to make the cause of fighting against anti-Semitism a big thing. In fact, at every opportunity he had to possibly let in more Jews into the country in order to save them from potential genocide, he decided not to. 
just like he decided to kill every single anti-lynching bill that came across his desk. Because once again, think about the precedent, he needed to push forward the New Deal, you know, those policies that didn't work. And he needed to secure Southern votes to pass the New Deal policies, which remember, didn't work. But once again, the precedent is what matters. And the number one reason why FDR is just the best is that time he helped cover up a genocide. Back in 1932 and 1933, Stalin was intentionally starving the Ukrainians to death, not only to help industrialize the Soviet Union, but also to punish the Ukrainian national movement. The United States and most Western governments were well aware of what was going on. Reports from our diplomats in Eastern Europe, as well as reports in newspapers, papers in Poland, Lithuania, and all over across the place, they had reports of this. Because of this, there is very little chance that FDR didn't know what was going on. But FDR thought, well, well, we're in the middle of the Great Depression. So I know, we'll open up trade relations with the Soviet Union. We'll grant them diplomatic recognition, that'll open up trade, and then the Soviets will buy stuff from us. That means factories will hire workers and the Great Depression was over. Yes, that's the reason why. FDR chose not to do anything or say anything about the genocide going on in Ukraine back in the 1930s because he thought it would help end the Great Depression. FDR is just the best, right? Thanks again to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Make sure you use the promo code CASUAL at checkout to get 83% off a two-year plan. I'd also like to thank my patrons for helping make this video possible. Their month-to-month -month support allows me to spend more time not only making big videos that cover in-depth topics, but also give me an opportunity to experiment with something lighter and silly like this. If you're interested in becoming a patron yourself, go ahead and check out patreon.com slash casual historian to learn more. If you're interested in more FDR goodness, then I recommend my previous video about that time FDR tried to kill the gold standard because he also thought that would end the Great Depression. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you all next time.